and welcome to today's installment of Software Sunday for January 24th, 2016. Today we're going to be taking a look at a personal favorite of mine. It's a piece of bootable software that I've been using for quite a while. And if you checked out my last video where one of my viewers sent over a couple different hard drives and I tested them out, you already know uh, what the piece of software is. Today we're going to be taking a look at Seagate C Tools for DOS. Today I am going to stick to the usual agenda. First off, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background information on C Tools, then I'll take you over to the screencast, show you where to get it, how to download it, and what exactly to do with it. And then I'll actually put it into my computer, boot it up, and we'll check out how to use it and what exactly it has to offer. Basically, C Tools is a free and easy to use drive diagnostics tool that will allow you to quickly test out if the drive in your system is good or not. And I use this a lot because uh, sometimes I can't tell if the operating system's bad or the hard drive's bad. And I have to do is throw in a copy of C tools, boot it up, run a drive diagnostic test, and it will spit it back out if the drive is good or not. And then I can go from there, uh, wipe the hard drive, reinstall the operating system, then I'm good to go. So that's really what I use it for. Of course, uh, there's tons of different applications for this. I believe it works with uh, SATA and PADA hard drives. I have uh, tested it out with uh, good old IDE interface and SATA, of course. Um, and it does come in a bootable version and a version that you can just run on Windows. But once again, I prefer to use the bootable version because uh, sometimes the systems I'm using have corrupt versions of operating systems and therefore I can't actually install it onto the operating system. So the bootable version is extremely convenient for me. It's based off the uh, free DOS kernel. And of course, all the source code for the FreeDOS kernel is publicly available, so you can go ahead and check that out on the FreeDOS website. Link will be in the description. Oh yeah, and that reminds me, I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, but the full article is up and available on my website if you don't want to listen to me talk and would prefer to read the article instead. So of course, the link for that will be in the description too. All right, so I've already shot this clip once and I ran into a very interesting problem, which I will bring up in just a second. But as you can see, we're at my desktop now. At this point, you can go ahead and open up your internet browser, navigate over to Google. Of course, it opened up on the wrong screen, but navigate over to Google, type in C tools for a DOS. Do not click on the first link that pops up because I did this, you know, let me just go ahead and show you. I did this earlier and uh, this is the bootable version. I accepted the uh, license agreement, went down to download uh, and this worked before, but now it's saying bad requests. So unfortunately, uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work for everyone. So don't do this. Instead, scroll down just a couple links further and click on this link right here. And of course, I'm gonna include this link in the description. Uh, it's www.seagate.com uh, support download C tools. So go ahead and click on that. And we want the bootable version, the, di the quick diagnostic tool, uh, C tools for DOS. So you wanna download this one, go ahead and click on it. It's gonna download the ISO file. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier, um, but this piece of software is compatible with both 64-bit and 32-bit systems, AMD and Intel alike. So click download. It's going to go to whatever uh, directory you have specified for your downloads. In my case, it's actually downloads. And it's a pretty small file. Shouldn't take too long to get onto your system. Once C Tools has finished downloading, you're going to go ahead and open up your preferred disk image burning software and burn it to a CD or DVD. As you guys can see, I went ahead and installed it to a CD so I could use it with some of my older systems that only have a CD drive installed. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to go ahead and throw it into my system. We're going to boot into the C Tools user interface. It has a very friendly GUI, uh, making it easy for anyone to use the diagnostics tool. Now, you can use a cursor to navigate around the user interface of C Tools, but mouse support is kind of iffy. Um, some work, some don't. So you, there's a lot of trial and error involved in trying to find one that actually works. I find uh, that the best route to go with this is to actually just use a PS2 mouse, but most systems these days don't even come uh, equipped with a PS2 port, so you're going to probably have to cycle through a couple different um, USB mice before you find one that works with C tools. Now, uh, keyboard support is a little bit better. I haven't really had trouble with that. 
Um, and you can really just get away with using a keyboard, but if you're not comfortable with that and you want to use a mouse, you're probably going to have to go through a couple different mice to find one that actually works with the, uh, the piece of software over here. So I'm going to boot the system up. Now we're going to open up the drive, put C tools in. System should boot up now. I'm going to go into my boot menu, which is F12 for me. Come on, let me into the boot menu. There we go. I'm going to select um, CD-ROM. Oh, you know what? It's not even in focus. There we go. Fixed it. Haha. <laughs> Caught that just in time. And that glare on the screen from my uh, spotlights in the back is kind of annoying. But as you can see, we are now booting from the CD. Um, it's detecting the free DOS kernel. And we are now booting into the user interface. Upon booting into the GUI, you will be met with a license agreement. Go ahead and accept it. And if you read through this, you'll actually notice that it says to only use this with Seagate drives. And chances are, if you have a Seagate drive, you're going to need it. Um, no, I'm just I'm just kidding. For some reason, everyone in my audience uh, doesn't really like Seagate drives, even though I've never really had any issues with them. Uh, but go ahead and just accept the agreement. I don't know where I was going with that. And now it's going to detect all of your hard drives. I have a uh, solid state drive in here and then two Western Digital black hard drives and it's detecting all of them. Um, yes, this will work with solid state drives and your traditional hard drives as well. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look at all the options we have up here. So basic test, we have a short test and a long test. The short test only takes a couple minutes and the long test takes a few hours. Uh, the long test goes through every single sector on your drive and checks to see if it's good or not. And then the acoustic test will turn off your, uh, I should probably get closer here because you guys might not be able to see it. But the acoustic test will actually turn off the drive so you can see how much noise it's making uh, while it is on. So we'll move over to advance. If you hear it clicking, you, you know, you can diagnose which drive is making the clicking by uh, just clicking down here and then opting to turn it off. So advanced, uh, we can set the capacity to 32 gigabytes, set capacity manually, uh, set capacity to max. So that's pretty self-explanatory help. I mean, uh, it's just gonna tell you a little bit about the program and how to use it. And then down here, you can see all of our hard drives listed. Uh, that's the solid state drive here. And here are the two Western digital black drives. So uh, let's just say you get in here and you want to run a short diagnostic. You're going to pick the drive that you want to run the diagnostic on. I'm just going to pick one of the uh, Western digital black hard drives. And you're going to go to basic and run a short test. Once the test has finished, you will get your results off to the right hand side over here where it says test results and hopefully uh, it says passed for you. Below the drive list, you will see two other boxes. One gives you a little bit more information on each drive, such as capacity, if it supports smart or not, if smart has been tripped, uh, and then a couple other things. You can read them off right here. You should be able to see it if you're watching in 1080p. And then below that, you can see test information and results. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it tells you when the uh, test was started, what drive the uh, test was performed on, and if the uh, test was successfully passed. One other feature that I want to touch on before I end this is the logging function up here. So if something goes wrong with the test, you can uh, go into the uh, log and view all of that information. There is one thing that I would absolutely love for them to add to this program, and that's the ability for C tools to relay the smart information back to me, such as the uh, complete runtime, the startup cycles, the temperature, that kind of thing. I'm not sure how hard that would be to do on something like this, but I mean, that would be a really neat feature to have in this. Uh, it's not too big of a deal because you can just go into your operating system and use something such as crystal disk info, like I did in the last video. But you know, to have it on this would be really awesome because once again, it's bootable and you don't have to have an operating system installed it would just be super convenient so if you work on computers a lot like I do C tools is a great piece of software to have laying around really easy to use uh, just throw it in your system boot it up and then you can quickly diagnose your drive so a uh, really great piece of troubleshooting software if you have any questions comments or concerns or if I left something out in this video go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section don't forget to leave a like and of course please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next installment of AA computers and technology